Hello, this is Mrs. Scarple, and in this video we're going to take a look at angles formed by two lines that are intersected by one line. So that line that intersects two or more coplanar lines, and when I say coplanar it's two lines that I could draw on a sheet of paper, that line that intersects the two of them is called a transversal. So you'll see in this chart below that in each case I have two lines that are intersected and the line that they're intersected by has this T. So that line T in every case is what we call a transversal. Now that transversal creates different pairs or different types of pairs of lines. The first is corresponding angles. If you look at angle two and angle six, they're on the same side of the transversal and they're both on the top side of their respective line. Alternate interior angles are going to be two angles in between the two lines, but on alternate sides of the transversal. They're not going to be adjacent to each other because they have to be an angle formed by each of the lines. So in this case, angle five and angle four are an example of alternate interior angles. Alternate exterior works the same way, except the angles are outside of the two lines but they are still on alternate sides of that transversal. And consecutive interior angles, they're also sometimes called same side interior angles. They're going to be on the same side of the transversal, but in between the two lines. So let's practice identifying some pairs. We want consecutive interior angles. Now, if you would rather look at it so that it is similar to what we were just looking at and you had a piece of paper, you could just take your paper and turn it sideways to help you see this is my transversal that's going up and down and these are my two lines. Consecutive interior are going to be on the same side in between the two lines. So angle eight and angle seven are considered consecutive interior but so are angle three and angle four. Alternate interior, we're going to use those same four angles, but they, remember they need to be on alternate sides of the transversal. So angle eight and angle four, and angle three and angle seven are what we call alternate interior. Corresponding angles, we actually have a total of four pairs of them in this diagram. Remember, corresponding angles are on the same side of the transversal and on the same side of their respective line. So angle two and angle four are corresponding. Angle one and angle seven angle three and angle five, and angle eight and angle six. Alternate exterior, we only have two pairs of those. They have to be on alternate sides of the transversal but outside of the two lines. So angle one and angle five. angle two and angle six. Now, some things that we know, trying to get my tool here, we, in this um, slide, oops, I opened a calculator and that's not what I here we go, here's the protractor. On this particular slide, we're going to use a protractor and measure some angles. Sorry about this happening in the middle of this video. We don't need the calculator, so let's close it. There we go. So I have this tool called a protractor. I can turn it. The thing about the protractor is you want it you want where these crosshairs are down here, 
let me pull this so we can see a little better. You see how these lines cross? We want those to be at the vertex of our angle. And I want the zeros to line up with either side of my line. There we go. Um, it's a little hard to tell from this video, but I can tell you in class, when we were reading from zero up to this side of angle one, we said that the measure of angle one is going to be 57 degrees. And then by reasoning, I'm going to move the protractor out of the way, angle one and angle two are on a line, so we know they're a linear pair. So we could say that, well, if angle one is 57, if we take 180 and subtract 57, that's going to give us 123 degrees. And then, because I know that angle one and angle three are vertical, I know that angle three is 57 degrees. And four is vertical with angle two, so angle four must also be 123 degrees. Then we took our protractor and we moved it to the set of angles at the bottom. And we found that angle 5 happened to be 57 degrees as well as angle 1. And we used the same reasoning process to show that, well, 5 and 6 are a linear pair so they must be supplementary, so angle 6 is going to be 123 degrees. 5 and 7 are vertical, so they have to be the same, 57 degrees. 6 and 8 are vertical, so they have to be congruent, they have to be the same. Now I want to point out, I have these double arrowheads on my lines. That's what's indicating that my lines are parallel. So we're going to take a look at some properties of the angle types we just talked about and these measurements. So when we have parallel lines intersected by a transversal, the corresponding angles are, well if I take a look at just one pair of corresponding angles, angle one corresponds to five, I can see that they are equal. In geometry we call that congruent. I can also take a look at the alternate interior angles when lines are parallel. So alternate interior, alternate sides but in between the two lines, angle 3 and angle 5 for example, and I look at those and they are also the same. So they are congruent. Let's take a look at alternate exterior, alternate sides of the transversal, outside the two lines, so angle two and angle eight, and if we look, we said they would have the same measure. So alternate exterior angles are also congruent. Consecutive interior, same side but between the lines, so for example, angle three and angle six. If I look at the measurements, they're not the same, but I do know that they're going to add up to 180. We call that supplementary, because supplementary angles add up to 180. So when you have parallel lines intersected by a transversal, you're either going to have angles that are congruent, or you're going to have angle pairs that are supplementary. So here we know that one angle is 75 degrees. We need to find the other three angles that are also 75 degrees and explain why we think that is the case or know that is the case. Well, I'm going to start with the vertical angle to 75 degrees. The measure of angle two is going to equal 75 degrees because it is vertical. 
because they are vertical angles, they are going to be equal. I know that the 75 degree angle corresponds to angle 7, so I can say the measure of angle 7 equals 75 degrees because they are corresponding angles. And then if I look at what's vertical to angle 7, that's angle 6, and I can give the reason that it's vertical angles. But I could also say corresponding with angle 6, because angle 6 corresponds to angle 2, and we know that angle 2 is 75 degrees. And our last example, we're given that the measure of angle 1 is 105 degrees. I'm going to write that on my diagram. Find the measures of the remaining angles. Well, vertical to angle 1 is angle 4. So angle, the measure of angle 4 equals 105 degrees because of vertical angles. Uh, measure of angle 2 is going to have to be 75 degrees. 105 plus 75 is 180. The reason I'm going to say that is because angle 2 is a linear pair with angle 1. Angle 3 is vertical to angle 2 so it also needs to be 75 degrees. Angle 5 corresponds to angle 1. Since they're corresponding, they have to be the same, and since angle 1 is 105 degrees, angle 5 needs to be 105 degrees. Angle 6 must then be 75 degrees. We can either say because it's linear with angle 5, or we can say it corresponds with angle 2. The measure of angle 7 is going to be the same as 6 because they are vertical angles. And the measure of angle 8 will be the same as angle 5, which is 105 degrees, because it is vertical with angle 5. Now, I could have also used angle 8 is alternate exterior with angle 1, therefore they are equal. I could have said angle 7 is consecutive interior with angle 4, therefore they are supplementary. So some of these really do have more than one reason that I could use. I was just trying to keep it simple in my explanations here. And this concludes our lesson on the angle pairs when we have parallel lines intersected by a transversal.